Today, we are going to take a look at equivalent fractions and simplifying fractions. In previous lessons, we've reviewed what a fraction is. We have looked at converting mixed numbers to fraction, improper fractions and improper fractions. We're going to focus today on equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are two or more fractions that have different numerators and denominators but they have the same value. So maybe when we put them in the calculator and we divide the numerator by the denominator, we get the same decimal for both fractions even though they look different. There's a pretty easy way to test for this without a calculator. What we're going to do is we're going to bring back the old idea of cross multiplying. So I am going to multiply 2 times 3, and I get a 6. Then I'm going to multiply the other direction. I'm going to multiply 6 times 1. Now, we all know that 6 is equal to 6. Because I got the same value for both sides when I cross multiplied, that means these are equivalent fractions. So we'll look at the second one. Same idea, I'm gonna cross multiply. Nine times one is nine. Three times three is nine. Because I got nines on both sides, that means these are equivalent also. On this last one, when I cross multiply, 40 times 4 is 160. 160 times 1 is 160. So again, I get equivalent fractions. All of these fractions look different from their partner, but they all have the same value. I'm gonna throw a stray little example over here. Let's say we have three fourths and one sixth. And we wanna test those out. Cross multiply, just like before. Four times one is four. 6 times 3 is 18. Now, the last time I checked, 18 and 4 were definitely not equal. So these are not equivalent fractions. So now you have an example of each kind. Now sometimes we might be given a fraction and we want to create equivalent fractions from it. So 
So we'll look at some steps. In the event you want to find an equivalent fraction, pick a number. Any number you want. Any real number. So if I come down and use four thirds as my example, maybe I want to pick two. It's a nice small number. Multiplying by two is easy. Now I want to multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator I have to do it to both of them by the number you picked So I am going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the number I picked, which happened to be 2. That gives me 8 over 6. That's it. That makes a fraction that is equivalent to the fraction that I have. For the next one, I'm going to pick a different number. Let's pick, we'll go a little bit bigger this time. I'm going to pick five. I'm going to multiply five times the numerator and the denominator. We multiply it times the numerator and the denominator because 5 over 5 is really just equal to 1. It's a fancy way to write 1. And we all know that multiplying a thing by 1 just gives you the thing. It doesn't change the value of our fraction. I know 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 5 is 25. So this is my equivalent fraction. And this one's a little bit different. When I choose, I'm going to try to choose strategically. And I really, I, mean, I could multiply 54 and 108 by the same number, but those numbers are already kind of big, and I really would rather not make them bigger. What I do notice, though, is that both of these numbers are even because they end in an even number. <clears throat> so when I pick, I'm going to pick 2 again. I picked 2 because 2 is also an even number. And instead of multiplying, this time, I'm going to divide by 2. And as long as I do it in the numerator and the denominator, it's totally fine. 108 divided by 2 is 54. 54 divided by 2 is 27. And that is still a perfectly valid equivalent fraction. So you don't always have to multiply. Sometimes dividing might work out a little easier for you. Now we're going to have um, a proportion. We want it to be equivalent fractions. But we don't know what that number is supposed to be down there in the denominator. 
we want to find a number so that when we stick it in there, we get two equivalent fractions. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I think for right now, what we're going to do is look at it this way. When I see a problem like this, in my head, I usually see 13 times what number? gives me 39. And what I'm trying to do is I'm find, trying to find the relationship between those two numbers. So I can go through and I can say, well, I know 1 times 13 is 13. I know 2 times 13 is 26. 3 times 13 is 39. That's the one I'm looking for. So, if 3 times 13 gives me 39, 6 times 13, I'm sorry, 6 times 3, 18, gives me two equivalent fractions. So that means our missing number is 18. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Sometimes it might be easier to rewrite the problem so that the question mark is on the right side. If that makes it easier for you, please rewrite it. Take the extra 30 seconds out of your day to rewrite the problem if that's going to help you not make mistakes. So if I go back into my brain, remember I'm looking for a relationship between those two numbers. And I want five times what number equals 40. Well, you could go through the list like we did with 13. <clears throat> but I happen to know that 5 times 8 is 40, so it looks like 8 is going to be our magic multiplier. So, I want to come through here and I'm going to multiply 5 times 8. That kills me 40. If I multiply 4 by 8, that gives me 32. That's the number we're looking for. So in this case, our question mark, our mystery number, is 32. For this one, I'm going to rewrite it again because I like the question mark on the right side. So now I'm going to ask myself, no, I don't think I want to rewrite it. I'm going to leave it because it's going to work pretty well this way. I want the relationship this time between the denominators because my question mark is in the numerator. Four times what number gives me 36? Well, I could go through the list again like we did with the 13, but I happen to know that four times 9 gives me 36. That is not a 6. So 9 is going to be our magic multiplier.
Four times nine gives me 36. Now I need what times nine gives me nine? Well, I know that one times nine is nine. So that missing number we're looking for is not nine. It's one. If I stick a one right up here where my question mark is, one times nine gives me nine, and that's what I was looking for to get an equivalent fraction. Last one. I need seven times some number to give me 28. I know seven times four is 28, so I need to multiply by four in the denominator. Nine times four gives me 36. So 36 is our missing number. Um, one, two, and three, these down here are similar problems. Let's take a look at simplifying fractions. We say a fraction is simplified when the numerator And a denominator have no common factors other than one. Sometimes instead of simplified, you may have heard it called reduced. Reducing a fraction to lowest terms is the same idea as simplifying a fraction. And you know me, I'm a steps girl. So here's your steps. The first thing we are going to do is factor the numerator and denominator. So if I go down here, to this one. I know six could be one times six, or it could be two times three. I don't have any other factors for six. Then I'm gonna factor 24. I could do one and 24. I could do two times 12. I could do three times eight, or I could do four times six. Factoring done. Our second step is going to find, is going to be find the greatest common factor. You may remember this as the GCF. I'm going to go through my list of factors and I'm going to find the biggest number they have in common. That looks like the six. Third step, we are going to divide the numerator and denominator 
by the GCF. So in the case of our example down here, we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 6. So if I start with 6 over 24, 6 divided by 6 and 24 divided by 6, I get 1 over 4. And this is my reduced or my simplified fraction. If you look at these, only thing that you can divide into 1 is 1. The only number you can divide into 4 is 1 or 4. So they only have 1 in common. That means we have a simplified fraction. If I go look at 20 over 45, I know 20 could be 1 times 20, 2 times 10, or 4 times 5. So I'm going to look at 45. I could do 1 times 45. I could do 3 and 15. I could do 5 and 9. Mm, I think that might be it. We'll find out. If I look for the greatest common factor, it looks like the biggest number they have in common is 5. So if I go back to 20 over 45, and I divide the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5, I get 4 over 9. And looking at 4 over 9, I don't know of two numbers or any number that will divide those down further. So I'm done. Now let's say you don't want to go through the greatest common factor process, but you happen to notice that 14 and 46 are both even numbers. And that means you could divide both of them by 2. Okay. Try it. See where it leads you. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 46 divided by 2 is 23. Now, I know I can only multiply 1 times 7 to get 7. And I know I can only multiply 23 times 1 to get 23. So 1 is the only thing these two numbers have in common. It's already reduced. <coughs> I'm going to jump down to 5. I'm going to start with a 2 again. Because I noticed they're both even. Well, 20 divided by 2 gives me 10. 38 divided by 2 is 19. Well, it just so happens that only 1, 2, 5, and 10 work for 10. And only 1 and 19 multiply to 19. So there's that guy. If you multiply, I'm sorry. Let's look at fifty over seventy five. 
Now, I know that this one ends in a zero and this one ends in a five, so they're both divisible by five. Fifteen divided by five gives me ten. Seventy-five divided by five, five goes into seven twice with two left over, or once, oh my goodness, with two left over, and I get a 15. Now, if I look at my 10, that's one and 10 and two and five. If I look at the 15, that's one and 15 and three and five. I still have a greatest common factor. So I need to reduce those one more time. I need to divide by five again. And that's okay. If you don't get it on the first shot, you can keep dividing. Nobody's gonna stop you. 10 divided by five gives me two. 15 divided by five gives me three. And I know those only have one in common. So that is my reduced fraction. So that is a quick overview of simplifying fractions, making equivalent fractions, um, 